Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, telephone. I didn't know it was a telephone. I can recognize the telephone. Darling, it's only quarter of eight. Now, who would be calling us at quarter of eight in the morning? I can't imagine. Well, why don't you answer it and see? David, you don't suppose... No, darling, I don't suppose it's Mama. Oh, I hope she's all right. Well, you just saw her yesterday in town. David, the telephone is ringing, and it might be Mama. You want me to go answer it? No, 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 no. I'll You're just afraid if it isn't. You isn't for you. You'll never find out who it was. Can't you guess? Hello? Oh, Miss Tucker, it's you. Well, how are you this morning? Good. We haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, yes, yes. I intend to come over and visit you any day now, very, very soon. Well, is it Mama? No, Delilah Tucker, of all people. What do you suppose she wants at this hour? I don't know. She's talking, but she hasn't said anything yet. Oh, yes, Miss Tucker. Your brother? No, he's not here. Oh, of course, nothing's happened to him. Why anything happened to him? <laughs> yes, well, if he comes, we'll call you right up. And, Miss Tucker, there's nothing to worry about. You know, nothing can happen to Jared Tucker. Why, he's... he's... Indestructible. Uh, thank you. He's indestructible, Miss Tucker. Yeah, goodbye. You see, David, other people worry about other people they love, and I am not the only one. Are you comparing Mama to an 86-year-old man? Comparison is rather favorable to Mama, isn't it? <laughs> well, what's the old man of the mountain up to now? I don't know. Delilah said he raced out of the house this morning in a fury. <laughs> she probably told him he should wear an extra sweater, and he didn't want to be pampered. Oh, you poor man. You have such a hard time of it with us women. We certainly do. What she said was that Jared read the Eastbrook Town Crier, and something in it made him wild. Before she could wild. say two words to him, he had dashed out. Well, more credit to him. <laughs> when an 86-year-old man can dash... Let him dash. Lila is very upset. Oh, you women are always getting upset. You men are always taking sides. Oh, well. Better finish your coffee, David. Where's our copy of the town crier? I don't know. It came yesterday, late afternoon. Haven't seen it yet. I think it's uh, in the kitchen. Oh, it's going to be a lovely sunny day today. I can put the baby outside. Bet you 20 cents. That's Jared Tucker right now. Tucker here. You win your bet. Hello, we're in the dining room, Mr. Tucker. Door wasn't on the latch, so I just walked in. Well, that's what the door was off the latch for. I'm so doggone crackling mad this morning. Oh, oh, good day, folks. Good day. I'm so doggone crackling crazy mad this morning, I could choke a hog with my own bare hands. Uh, Delilah just called. Oh, sister mine? Mm. What's she on my tail for? Well, she's worried. She said you were so doggone crackling mad at something she was worried. Well, let her worry. I ain't got no time to worry about her worrying. She, 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 she's always worrying. What you so mad at? Have you seen your copy of the East Brook Town Crier? No. Nope. This issue here just come out yesterday? No, we were just mentioning that we hadn't had a chance to look at it. Now, look at here, son. Look at here. Where? You'll see what I'm so dang blasted sore at. Well, I can't imagine. What is it? Beating a man's privacy, smearing his picture around, pulling all his skeletons out of his closet and spreading them out on the pages so well, they can man. sell more copies of the paper. What this here world's coming to, hey? Ain't a man got a right to his own known privacy? Well, can we can, can we see that paper you have in your hand, Mr. Tucker? Ever since man had the brains to invent himself the wheel, he's got so consigned cocky with himself, he thinks he's got the right to do anything that comes, comes to his mind. Well, how about looking at your paper? Then he goes and invents a printing press, starts publishing newspapers, got to fill up all this space, so what's he do? Starts robbing other men of their privacy. I'll show them. That's what I'll do. I'll show them. Please, show us what it is. Oh, ain't you seen it? No. No, we told you we well, have why didn't you say so? Well, I, I tried to, yeah, but I'm you... I'm saying I'm 92 years old. They got a nerve. Why, I won't be 87 until, uh, until bogberry season comes around. Bogberry. Making an old man of me. I'm so doggone picking... Go, go on, go on, have a look. Well, where? Right there. Page one. There. Oh, Way down here to the corner of the page. Leastways, you'd think they'd have the sense to put it up in the center of the page, but no, they invade a man's privacy, and then they tuck it away in the corner of the bottom of the page. Sometimes I think there ain't no more brains in a parcel of men who run this here paper than in a, in a, in a parcel of old shoes. 
Historic personality of Eastbrook, Jared Tucker of Duck Pond Lane. Let me see, David. Hold it so I can see. Duck Pond Lane. Where'd they get that, eh? Well, isn't that the name of the side road your farm's on? Oh, oh, yes, so it is. Mm. One of our foremost citizens who has lived in this community for the last 92 years. 92! There ain't no need to exaggerate about Jared Tucker. He's good, good, just the way he is. Family first settled in Eastbrook some 200 years ago. Property lines on River Road. Well, this is a wonderful article, Mr. Tucker. I don't see what you're so mad about. No, 92 years old, Duck Pond Lane. One of the foremost citizens. Why, I be the most foremost citizen. Well, now, we all know that. Yeah, here it goes on. Mr. Tucker is well known for his rather acid commentary on current events and habits of his fellow men. That's right. Greeted the other day on Main Street in front of Dorland's Pharmacy. Dorland's yes. Pharmacy. Wait a minute here. Turn it over. In Eastbrook Center. Yes. Mr. Tucker tossed us this tidbit. The trouble betwixt men and women is the trouble with Men and women. Yep, that's what it says. <laughs> but that ain't one of my better sayings. That, that, that's what it says, though. Well, I think this is a very fine article, Mr. Tucker. We're all very proud of it. I have half a mind to sue that editor, young Will Blake. I'll... You mean you, you didn't know this article was to appear? Oh, well, Will Blake said something about it. Oh, this, I uh, see. This is uh, kind of an anniversary issue with the mm. paper. Mm -hmm. So when I was accosted by the reporter on Main Street... I had kind of an inkling of what was in Will Blake's head, but I didn't think he'd be such a fool as to actually come out with it. Well, I, I still don't see why you're so upset. No, man. I think it's very fine. I believe in the progress of man. I believe we humans got to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and start getting some place in the universe. My ancestors hewed themselves out a piece of land, built a farm on it, and they didn't get no publicity. Now, just because I happen to be kind of toothless, Scrawny in the arms, stringy in the hair, brittle to the bone, and uh, loose in the tongue. Will Blake thinks he's got a right to expose me and all my ancestors for the entertainment of his readers. But nobody did this out of fun, Mr. Tucker. This is serious. The newspaper thought people would be interested in knowing about you. What for? Well, because you're, because you're an interesting character. That it, eh? Hey? I'm only an ordinary sort of feller. But I am superior to everybody else. And that's reason enough. The old man of Duck Pond Lane. That's what it uh, says. What kind of respect can a man get when he's got a moniker like that stuck on to him? Oh, that's not so bad. Every time I walk down Main Street, I'll feel like, a, like a, a goldfish swimming around in a glass bowl. Well, personally, <laughs> I think it's wonderful. I love publicity, and we are terribly proud to know you, Mr. Tucker. And we certainly are. Hey, darling, what about calling Delilah? Oh, yeah. Remember, she's at home worrying that Jared has done something fearful to himself. Oh, don't mind Delilah. She's wishful thinking. Well, I'll call her this minute. Well, Mr. Tucker, have a cup of coffee with yeah, me. I ain't got no mind for coffee. My insides is all snarled up over this here now, thing. Now, come on, calm down, I'll Mr. walk Tucker. into my barnyard and my hens will cluck, cluck and cackle at me in fun. No, my they pigs won't. will aren't, aren't and smile at me as if to say, <laughs> Jared Tucker, you sure be one old fool. Now, no such thing and you know it. I'm going to call Delilah now. I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to talk to nobody. I'm going to hold up like a bear in November. Hibernate, that's me. Oh, telephone again. Hello? Oh, Miss Tucker, I was just going to call you. Yeah, he's here and he's fine. And don't you worry about him. He's going to stay fine, too. Well, personally, strictly between you and me, you understand, I, I don't think he's as angry as he acts. Oh, you knew that, too? <laughs> well, fine. I'll, I'll tell him you called. Goodbye. Well, that was your sister, Mr. Tucker. I told her you were fine. What'd you go and tell her that for? I ain't fine. Well, I mean, I mean, compared to other men, you're fine. Oh. Yes, this is all very interesting, and I'm certainly honored to have my breakfast in the company of the Sage of Eastbrook, but I'm afraid it's time I'm on my way to work. Guess I'll get back to my Duck Pond Lane farm and tend to my barnyard. Oh, there's the phone again. I was certainly popular. Maybe it's Mama this time. Just wait till I tell Mama how famous Mr. Tucker is. Don't use that word in my presence, young woman. Hello? Mr. Tucker? Oh. oh, yes, he's here. Just a minute, please. It's for you, Mr. Tucker. I guess your sister referred the call over to us. She would mean I ain't got no privacy. Oh, what do you want with privacy? Privacy's no fun. Tucker here. Yep, this, this, this is him. How's that? 
Speak louder, man. Stop mumbling. These instruments are bad enough without you mumbling. What's that you say? No. No, I ain't interested in having my picture taken. I ain't interested at all. Not even with a cow. I'm a farmer, man, not a talky picture star. Huh. See what I mean? I'll be hounded. That's what I'll be. Hounded. I won't be able to call my life my own. I think it's exciting. You're a celebrity. What is exciting about being a celebrity? If I wanted to be a celebrity, I would have started years ago. Why, I could be a first-class celebrity if I'd have set my mind to it. Ain't nothing to that. Whoops. Probably for you again. Why don't you just take the phone out to yourself, Mr. Tucker? Unless, of course, you think you need a secretary. Oh, it's the end of my peaceful days. Tucker here. Yes, this is him. Uh, how's that? Oh, you want to interview me for the Hartford Press? Uh, well, I don't read the Hartford Press. I ain't interested. No, no, I ain't. Oh, oh go ahead, Mr. Tucker. Let him interview you. Uh, hold on a second. What's that there you say, ma'am? Well, why shouldn't you let them interview you? What, well, what for? So other folks can repeat what I say and then, and then call it their own? Oh. Plagiarism is the greatest compliment in the world. Uh, hello? You still there? Uh, how's that? You, you'll give me $25? Well, don't you realize $25 is money? Oh, oh, you do. And I'm worth it to you, hey? Well, <clears throat> for $30, I'll allow myself to make the effort to let you write some lines about me. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll call you when I'm ready, Mr., uh, Mr., uh, what to call you, boy? Oh, Mr. Farenholt at the Hartford Press. Yes, well, I'll call you as soon as I get my pigs fed. Hear that? Thirty dollars. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Mr. Tucker, you're in business. Yeah. Guess what I got to say is kind of pretty important. Yep. The Sage of Duck Pond Lane. Son, uh, it's got kind of a ring of dignity to it. The Sage of Duck Pond Lane. What's the attraction at your house? The mother of one teenager asked another. The second woman laughed. It's no secret, she said. I guess it's just that we buy Coke by the case. And the kids know there's always enough on ice for the whole crowd. Ice-cold Coca-Cola is a major attraction where teenagers are concerned, as you know. If there are young people in your family, how about bringing home a case of Coke this afternoon? It's only a dollar. Well, Joe, don't you feel proud of the sage of Duck Pond Lane personally? Well, it's quite an honor, David. It is, as you know. So Mr. Tucker is starting to think. So Mr. Tucker has always thought. All he needed was someone to agree with him. Well, I better be on my way. That's right, David. You have a train to make. Oh, I'll make it. Weather's good. Driving to the station will be fast. Then uh, make hay while the sun shines, David, because Monday it rains. Well, thanks for the weather forecast. And rain means rubbers. I never wear rubbers. Wait and see. And right now, you'd better step on it. I'm on my way. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.